Hey guys, it's Linux next year, and in today's video, we are going to be setting up and configuring uh, gaming mice and keyboards on Linux. As I know, when people move over, they might not think of this at the time of moving over to Linux, but then they might plug in like a mouse or something, like their gaming mice or keyboard, and they're like, oh, the gaming companies that do the um, software side don't support Linux. So then they're like, well, how do I configure my mouse or keyboard on Linux? It's a it's a hot topic uh, most of the time when people move over, and uh, usually there's some really good suggestions out there for um, certain different uh, hardware that you have. And then there is some companies that do support Linux natively with their software. So that's what I'm going to teach you in today's video. Now the first one that we're going to set up, and I'll just leave dot points where you can move over to different hardware that I talk about. The first one is going to be about Logitech. Now uh, we're going to be using Solar uh, for my Logitech G303 Shroud Edition uh, because that is supported on Solar. And I think Solar is a great piece of software for looking at the battery percentage of your Logitech hardware, uh, mostly for mice. Uh, for when it comes to keyboards, there is another software that I mentioned down the line. But for mouse, I would say that Solar is really good for that. It shows the, um, the battery percentage, it shows DPI changes, it, you can change your um, polling rate on the mouse also. So if you do go to the GitHub page, we can have a look through of what the program looks like. Now with these screenshots, it looks really old when it comes to its UI, but uh, when we do launch Solar here, it's not going to look like this. It's going to match the theme that we have applied right now, which should be like a breeze theme, I'm pretty sure. Solar is a Linux manager for many Logitech keyboards, mice, and other devices that connect wirelessly to a unifying Bolt, Lightspeed, or Nano receiver, as well as many Logitech devices that connect via a USB cable or Bluetooth. Solar is not a device driver and responds only to special messages from devices that are otherwise ignored by the Linux input system. So uh, Solar actually does support keyboards uh, and some other devices, as it says there. And then it says here that Solar supports pairing, unpairing, configuring the device settings, custom but button configuration, running rules in response to special messages from devices. And if I have a look here, install pack packages, uh, we can get it from the Arch repository if we want to, or the um, Ubuntu stable PPA that you can add on a, a Ubuntu based distro, or it also is available on NixOS. And there is a couple other repos that are available, uh, but I'm guessing those are, they may be several versions behind the current version, which probably means that he doesn't maintain it. So also, uh, Solar is available on Flathub slash Flatpak. So we can open our GUI store. For me, it's Discover. For you, it may be the GNOME software store. And we can just easily search up Solar. And as you can see, it is right here. Now, I don't have it installed right now, uh, but it does work uh, because I actually thought that it didn't work. But what I had to do was restart my computer so then it could actually launch properly and interact with the mouse. So I've installed the system version uh, through Arch. And if we do open it up here, I'm pretty sure it is installed. Yep, it is installed. And if we do launch it, we can see that it has picked up a Lightspeed receiver and that it's picked up a G303 Shroud Edition gaming mouse. So as we said before, uh, you know, you can look at the battery level, you can look at the wireless link, which it says that it's encrypted. Uh, there's a scroll wheel direction that we can change, a scroll wheel resolution, a scroll wheel diversion. Uh, you can look at the onboard profiles that are available also. And then we can also look at the polling rate. So we can change this. Uh, one milliseconds means a thousand hertz. Uh, I'm pretty sure if it's like, uh, like 8,000 hertz or something like that, it's like 0.0. .0 something milliseconds which is just insane that polling rate can go that high and then we also have a sensitivity dpi and if we want to use these we just click the um tick or unlock button and then we can easily just configure uh, the dpi and as i said before um, after you get solar installed restart your computer so then solar can interact and see the receivers so I guess the next one that we'll talk about is what if uh, you have Razer devices? I know a lot of gamers love having Razer devices because, you know, like RGB, they make some really good products also when it comes to their mouse line. Uh, they have great switches, like top of the line switches and their mouses, you know, pretty uh, amazing uh, build quality also. So I'll be using uh, my Razer Death Adder V2 that I don't use anymore. So if we do go to the Open Razer website, it talks about what is Open Razer. It's a community-led effort to support Razer peripherals on Linux. It consists of a Linux kernel module, a Damien, and a Python library. Its features, it supports hardware effects, it supports device and device functions, and an addressable RGB, so you can enable custom lighting via the software. Now, of course, not every device is supported on multiple of these um, softwares that I'm showing in today's video, um, and that's because, well, it's just it's community-led. 
Uh, and there's a lot of like reverse engineering going on when it comes to a device getting supported in the software. It's some, it can be some hard work sometimes if you don't know what you're doing at the start. But if you do look through here, there is a ton of different um, keyboards that are supported, like the Black Widow V3, the V3 Pro, uh, V3 Mini Hyperspeed. Um, they do support actually a lot of the newer devices, I would say, and they do keep up a lot when it comes to bringing support for a lot of Razer devices. So when it comes to, if you have a, like a new Viper mouse or a, like a new Huntsman keyboard or something like that, the chances are it, it probably will be supported um, in this software, mostly out of the gate and if it is a, a new device it may take a couple of weeks or a couple of months for open razor to respond and actually either buy the product or get someone in the community that already owns one to contribute um, to the project so if you do go to download here, the first one is that we need to do um, this command here. This will add us to this particular user group, which will be plug dev. And then we need to install the Linux header. Now, most people will have the Linux headers installed, but if you don't, I would suggest that you, you install the Linux headers for your kernel that you are using currently. And then after that, you just scroll down to your official distro of choice. So if it's Debian, you start with uh, starting with Debian 10, open razor is available from the official repositories, However, you may to need to install our package if your device was added in a newer version. Instructions and downloadable builds for Debian are available from the OpenSUSE build service. So that's where you would go to the OpenSUSE build service and you would install it. When it comes to Fedora, Fedora is pretty easy. You grab the kernel deliver package and then you do the um, config manager. You add the um, OpenSUSE repo for Razor Open and then you install the Open Razor meta package. And if you're on Rawhide, you basically do the um, exact same thing. Now for Arch, um, it's already available uh, in the official repos. So we can just do Pac-Man um, dash capital S, open Razor Damien, and then that will install it. You can grab the Git version if you want the latest commits, but I wouldn't really do that unless you've got like one of the most newest Razor devices ever. And then after that is done, uh, you basically want to restart your computer. So then the Damien can actually start running on the Linux distro that you're running. And then you can choose a front end GUI to you know, configure the device that you have. So for me, I'm going to use Polytraumatic, which is a GUI um, QT6 based application. There is a GTK version, but Razor Commander hasn't been updated in, I think, like a year or something. And it seems like the developer hasn't been doing many commits. So I'm guessing that might not work properly. It may work properly, but uh, I would probably just use Polytraumatic for a start to just configure your device. So then most things are working properly for you before you try out like a GTK version. But if we do open the app right now, and as you can see, it's already picked up my Razer Death Adder V2 and you know, the LEDs are already working from the last config that I had for it. Uh, we can change the uh, polling rate here. We can change the DPI. Uh, you can also change your scroll wheel effect. So if you want a reactive or you want a static or you want to change your color, there you go. You can change it to blue, uh, which is yeah, it's blue now. Well, crazy, I know, right? Uh, and then you can go to logo also and do like a breathe if you want to, which as you can see, it is breathing. And then you can create um, custom effects with the software also. So you can do new effect. We can select device, name it something, do a summary, do some mapping or a preview, a user grid, all types of different things we can do to create a your own like custom effect for that device. Now, another piece of software that I did find was called Eruption, uh, which by the title, of what this is, it's a RGB LED software for Linux, a user mode input and RGB LED driver for keyboards, mice, and other devices. So as you can see here, here's some of the screenshots of what it looks like. It's a GTK based GUI that you can configure your device that you have. It seems like he's showing off a lot of uh, Rocat uh, devices, which is good because Rocat, for some reason, I couldn't find many devices supported for Rocat. And if we do look through the list here, you can see that there's only a couple of Rocat devices that are really supported in this. Uh, but you can uh, test out the experimental version of the software if you want to. It's stated here that it's still a work in progress, uh, but when it comes to installing it, uh, it is pretty easy. Uh, if we do look at the install, if I can find it, we can see the different distros that it supports and what you have to do. So you would grab like on Arch, you'd grab the AUR version of Eruption, and then we do a lot of system control, user enables to enable some services to get Eruption working properly. And basically, if you don't know, 
uh, services run in the background on your Linux system. It's a way of just applications allowing to run in the background. And usually you do this system control, enable, and you usually do dash dash now, and then you type out the service that you want to run in the background. And then it will be running every time you boot up your PC. And that's basically what is happening here is you are enabling all the services. So the FX service, the audio service, the process monitor service, so then it can actually interact with the GUI and the hardware and it all works properly for you. But as you can see, it's pretty built out, I would say. It has a nice little applet icon that you can click on and, and change the desktop. You can change different effects and profiles for the device that you're trying to configure and even shows a battery percent or a brightness level changer also. I would say that's pretty cool that you're allowed to just install this and it, it should work for the devices that it does support either in experimental or in testing or in this like the stable version of the software. And then I guess the last one would be Piper. Now Piper is a GTK application. Uh, it has been recommended a lot throughout the years of, of me using Linux. I've seen it so many on Reddit forums or people recommending this and um, I don't have a device that is supported on this so I can't really show off this piece of software uh, but I have heard that it does work quite well and it uses the Rackbag D um, Damien or Damien or service to run in the background so then it can configure with the mouse and then Piper is just the front-end GUI for con configuring that device. But if we do go to the Librat bag um, device list, which I'll leave this link down below so you can look at all the devices that are supported on Piper slash Librat bag, um, you can have a look. There is a lot of devices that have been supported over the years from like 2005 all the way up to like 2018-ish. It does support a wide range of Logitech devices and I'm pretty sure it, it supports one Rocat device. It supports a lot of SteelSeries devices. So if you are a SteelSeries user, you have some SteelSeries equipment equipment, well, it might be supported for you on this application and you can just easily install it. And if we do look through the um, wiki of how to install Piper, uh, we just do either for Fedora, it's DNF install Piper, and then on Arch, it's Pac-Man dash capital S Piper. Debian is the APT install Piper. OpenSUSE is the Zipper install Piper. Solus is the EOPKG. IT Piper, which is an interesting command for installing a package. Uh, and Flatpak is supported, uh, so you can get the Flatpak version working. But as it says here, uh, Rackbag D cannot be Flatpaked yet, so users must install it manually. The Piper Flatpak requires the latest version of LibRightBag. So if you want to go down the Flatpak route, you can definitely can do that. Uh, if we do look at the manual way of doing it, we'll just have to install uh, LibRat. And then I think what you do is you just install install the Flatpak version of Piper, restart your device, and then it should be able to interact with the Librat bag Damien slash driver so then it can interact properly with the devices that you have. Now, what if you want to test your mouse polling rate? As I know some people may be like, oh, I have a, a 2K polling rate mouse or a 4K or an 8K polling rate mouse. How do I know if my mouse is actually doing 8K, 4K, 2K, or even 1k. Uh, well, what we can do is we can grab a uh, piece of software for doing it, which is called EVHZ. Now on Arch, it's pretty easy. We can just do um, EVHZ uh, git package. So if we just do paru EVHZ dash git, as we can see, it's already installed for us. And then after we get it installed, we can simply do the EVHZ, also pseudo EVHZ. And then as we can see, it's picking up the Razer Death Adder V2 and it's doing a thousand polling rate. And we can test this with other devices. If we plug in our Logitech device here, as you can see, the Logitech receiver is also doing a thousand polling rates. So if you, you know, if you want to see your polling rate and just make sure that these things are working properly, then uh, this is the uh, best tool I would say. Now, if the um, EVHZ package isn't available for you in your repo, you can go to the GitHub page and it just says here, the program is just EVHZ.c dot compile and run it. So if you just download this here and then we do GCC dash O EVHZ EVHZ dot C and then we do the sudo dot forward slash EVHZ, then it will run the program for you. 
All right, and the last thing is, what if you want to disable double click prevention? As I know, it's a thing that lots of gamers are like to have turned off. And I know it's turned off by default in Windows so that, um, you know, you can do like butterfly clicks or whatever it's called. And like, I know lots of people do it in Minecraft where you can do like uh, multiple clicks really fast on certain mouses. Like I know like the uh, Model O from Glorious is able to do uh, lots of double clicking. And the same with, I think like Lamzu Atlantis, the mouse that I use is my main mouse that also gets likes to get used for that type of stuff and uh, people always some people have asked about that like how do you disable it on Linux or they don't know uh, that there is a actual double click prevention software in lib input to um, stop that from happening so how do you disable this well there is this tutorial that I found here and it has worked for lots of people over the years now I would be, I haven't tested this myself if it actually does allow double clicking, but if you go through this thing, which seems to look fine to me, uh, you should be able to turn off double click prevention. All right, and I just uh, decided to do the actual tutorial and it does seem to work. I was able to get a double click uh, when before I was spamming the hell out of it. It would not do a double click at all. And this mouse has barely been used. I, I would say I've used it for maybe like four months, I would say before I bought another mouse mouse because this shape is um, extremely hard when it comes to a claw grip and so I didn't really like that uh, but as you can see here it, it actually did do one double click after enabling that simple config to turn off the lib input double click prevention. So I guess it comes down to my conclusion. Uh, the problem is not not every device is supported on uh, Linux when it comes to gaming devices. You may have a really new Razer device or Logitech device and it may not work on Linux when it comes to configuring it. It will probably work out the box because it's just a simple receiver that interacts with the mouse and Linux can pick that up pretty easily. Uh, but when it comes to you know certain like configuring it, that may not be available for you. And the other one is that there is a lot of more enthusiasts type mouses like my Lamzu Atlantis that I have here that I use for playing games and there's no software available for it when it comes to configuring it but the thing is is that this has memory that can be saved for the profile so my profile has already been saved from Windows and I brought it over and it already is on it's already on 800 dpi there's nothing really else to do there's no RGB on it. it it just charges through the USB cable so there's no difference there when it comes to that there's nothing that changes that piece of the hardware so so when it comes to some devices, like if we have a look through here, there's a lot of devices here that will probably work out of the box on Linux when it comes to the receiver. Uh, but when it comes to actually like configuring it with software, um, a lot of these mouses won't have support or the company won't have software support on Linux. Like example, like Pulsar, I've already asked Pulsar directly and um, they uh, gave them a suggestion to support Linux for their software. And they were like, you know, thanks for the suggestion. Uh, we will hopefully uh, bring Linux supported at some point, but not right now but uh the conclusion of this video is i hope more devs actually do support or more companies support linux down the line uh because you know linux is growing and i think this community made software that has been maintained for many years now um is doing an extremely good job i would say so if you did enjoy this tutorial uh with uh, it's like a medium sized tutorial uh definitely give it a like definitely subscribe to the channel also we are at, like i think over 5.6k subs so thank you for that i really do appreciate it we are getting pretty close to 6,000 subscribers which is just insane and also thank you to my members i'll show a screenshot of them now thank you for being a member of my channel i really do appreciate it hopefully you get this video early if we're able to edit the video quick enough i'll see you guys in the next video whatever that may be peace